Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the texting games of the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So the narcissist likes to play games. They were playing games from the minute you met them up until the relationship ended. And if you were hoovered, they were still playing games. They were trying to see if you would re-enter the relationship or if you have healed. But this video is the texting games of the narcissist. One of the main ways the narcissist keeps in contact or kept in contact with you was via smartphone or texting. Think about when you first met the narcissist. If you met them in the age of the smartphone or the internet, I am certain that you communicated via texting. And then if you didn't meet them way back then, even right now, let's say your relationship ended a couple of months or years ago, you still had a smartphone and I'm sure that you use texting. Texting to you was a way to keep in contact with the narcissist and with other people. Maybe your workplace uh, relationships or maybe family members. That is not how the narcissist looks at texting. They look at texting as a way to get information from anybody and to weaponize it against that those people. They also use texting to draw you into the relationship. Now really understand what I'm gonna mention here. When you were in the relationship with the narcissist, one thing you were is you were groomed and you were taught and trained to behave a certain way. Now that doesn't seem proper. And I'll tell you right now, it's not because nobody should be groomed and trained, but that's what the narcissist does. They want to shape you into whatever they want you to be, which is why you become an extension of them. That's why you lose your identity when you're in these narcissistic relationships. That is why you do anything for the narcissist because you were Con continuously trying to please them and appease them and keep them happy. Because if they are happy, then you have less of a chance of getting peppered with abuse. But again, remember, back then you did not know what narcissism was. You had no idea. You had to figure it out post-relationship, most likely. But when you did, you probably sat back in your chair or on the couch in shock. Oh my gosh, that's what this person was. That's what this person is. The narcissist is not anything even close to who you are. They're not a beautiful, bright, shining light. They're not an empath. They do not want to build people up. It's actually quite the contrary. They want to tear people down and take as much from these people, which one at one point was you, as they possibly can. But the texting games of the narcissist, they started early on when you were in that relationship. Go back in time when you would be texting them and you would be, everything was going really, really well and your friends were watching you glow and you were losing weight or gaining weight or your health was looking like a million dollars because you were really, really in love back then. Let's say if it was a romantic relationship and the narcissist was mirroring this back to you. The narcissist, what they were doing is they were getting your supply from them, uh, from you and they were filling their cup. They're like, oh my gosh, this person, they're always available. I can text them whenever I want to. I can do anything I want and they're available 24 seven to me. That's because again, you were trained, you were tricked, you were trapped, you were manipulated. And early on in the relationship, when the narcissist wanted to text you, many times they would te text you a bunch of hearts or emojis or puppies or unicorns or uh, I love you so much or I miss you or anything they would text you, but it would be a positive text almost every single time. It was meant to draw you in. So an example would be, you just met the narcissist and they started texting you once you got struck up a friendship or a romantic relationship and they would be texting you. Hey, can you pick me up at this time? I'll be waiting for you. Um, I, I miss you. I love you. Heart, 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 emoji, 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 kiss, 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 things like that. And then you're like, wow, this person really does love me. This is great. Okay. I'll leave work a little bit early and I'll go pick them up because that's what they wanted me to do. And I want to really build this relationship because I think this is really going to be something special. Maybe we could even move in together or get married or have kids. Who knows, but this is going really well. So what do you do? You text them back a monologue. Yes, I'll be there to pick you up. Heart, 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 wink, 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 hug, 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 emoji, whatever you want. All these fluffy unicorn puppy rainbow uh, emojis. And then you couldn't get there fast enough to pick them up. And why that was, was because again, they were love bombing you. They were administering all of the emojis via text to have you drop your guard and to believe that what they were sending you was real. And so you would mirror it back and send it back to them because you were falling for them. You were falling for the narcissistic relationship. And this is by design. So this went back and forth. 
And then what would happen? Well, the narcissist st started slowly to text you. And uh, this video is exclusively about texting. It's not about living under the same roof. But they would be texting you other things. And once they knew that they had you, once they sank their dirty fangs into you, those texts changed rather quickly. Maybe you would get a couple hearts here and there. Maybe you would get um, some information about them. But it wouldn't be like it was in the past. So you see, all of the fake love dries up once the narcissist knows they have you. That's when the I loves you fade away. That's when the heart emojis disappear. That's when you start getting texts like this. Like, hey, I can't, uh, don't pick me up today at five o'clock. I have to stay late. I am doing uh, a project with so-and-so, and so-and-so is the person of the same sex that you are. In other words, the texting is now going to triangulation. And you are now scratching your head thinking, wait a minute, I've been picking you up every Friday at five for half a year, but now all of a sudden you're telling me that you can't, and now you're telling me that even though the weekend is about to begin, that you are working on a project with another person who is similar to me, the same sex as the example. And you're scratching your head saying, what's going on here? Like, so now what happens there? Well, your day just took a turn and it did not take a favorable turn. It now has you planted, uh, it now has your mind wondering who this person is that they're with, why they're staying late, and what can you do about it? Well, you can do nothing about it. You have to try and fight your way through work now. And now you were super excited to pick the narcissist up at five, but that now turned into six or 7.30 and they don't need your ride anymore. Why? Well, because they're triangulating you with somebody. Now keep in mind, when the narcissist is triangulating you, that person may or may not even exist. Many times the narcissist makes up fake people. They will say, example, I was on an airplane. If I was the narcissist, I was on an airplane and these people gave me compliments about how I look and how well I speak and everything. And then they'll tell you that when they land. And then you, don't, you can't prove or not prove that those people existed. But what you do know, or you know now, is you're being triangulated. You're being invalidated. You're being devalued. You are being put up against somebody who may not even have existed. So now going back to the example Friday at five, well, now your Friday has just taken a little turn for the not so good. Let's say you went back home and you were living with the narcissist as an example. Well, they roll in around 7.30 and who is dropping them off? You get my point. Now you look out of the window and you see a strange car out there and the narcissist is getting out of the car a little bit slowly. They're turning back and looking at the driver. And yes, in fact, that person was the person you were being triangulated with. And now you are really confused. You don't know what's going on. Front door opens. The narcissist is beaming and glowing with supply because now they have just successfully triangulated you with that person and they are waiting for what you are going to say or do. The door opens and you say, hey, who was that? What's going on? Why were you so late? And you look really happy. How was your day? And then they just either shrug it off or say none of your business or everything's good and they, they, you don't get any answers because the narcissist will never give you answers. And when you bring light to something or you, you bring attention to something, then they know that that means something to you and they're never going to give you the answers you're looking for. They're going to shrug or ho-hum it. But then what happens? Let's say your weekend goes by and, or no, let's say it's that, that's that same night, Friday night, you're going out to dinner. Now, you've looked past the, what happened after work and you're just, you, you brush it under the carpet like you usually did. Now you go out to dinner and now the dinner, you're, you're going to her or his favorite restaurant. And what happens? Well, you're not being paid attention to as much as you used to again. And the narcissist is on their smartphone and perhaps giggling and laughing again. And what happens? Well, you're being ignored, being devalued, but you didn't know it because you, you don't know what the terms and the definitions on the narcissistic abusive cycle are but you're looking across the table from your current romantic interest who you've been with, let's say for six months or, or maybe a year, and they are now on their smartphone talking with somebody else. Now, was it the person that dropped them off earlier at, five, at 7.30 at night? I don't know, can't tell you, but what I can tell you is they're not talking with you. And what they are doing at that dinner, which you are paying for and you drove to get the, both of you to that dinner, is they are ignoring you or not paying attention to you. And they're using the smartphone or the texting games of the narcissist to do a few things. One, to inflict damage upon you, even though you're sitting right across the table from them. Two, to draw in another new supply on the smartphone. Remember, that's probably how you met them or perhaps it was how you met them. Or C, they are completely doing something different than what they're telling you, but you will never know because you don't look at their smartphone. Now, that is another texting game of the narcissist. When you're in these relationships, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't because the narcissist knows, again, when they placed their dirty fangs into you, they sunk them into you, they now knew that you were all in, you were committed, and they now knew that they could withdraw from you, and they now knew that they had you hooked. They now knew 
that you were becoming attached to them and they never ever became attached to you because they can't because they can't fall in love they have no empathy and all they want to do is play games with people's hearts people's emotions people's relationships people's health people's finances this is what happens so now the texting games of the narcissist continue on let's say now you went on a holiday or vacation or it was a birthday or a celebration or something a barbecue an event a ceremony if you will well you were physically present with the narcissist but what happened here what happened here is most likely there were a bunch of pictures taken on the smartphone and those pictures did not include you again let's use the example that you were married to the narcissist okay well you were married and let's say many of those pictures that you saw posted on social media they didn't include you it's, it's almost as if you didn't exist because these were strategically taken and the wedding ring on the finger which usually is on the left hand but I suppose not always that left hand was hidden now think about what I'm mentioning to you. this is a pivotal part of the video if you're married with a person your, your spouse and you guys are in a healthy loving stable relationship you should be proud of the wedding ring and the wedding ring should be displayed virtually in every picture now can it be in every picture no and should it be hung out like the Queen of England absolutely not it should be visible though because in that picture it is sending a message to whoever's looking at the picture that you're happily married and you're in love at least that's my hope but the narcissist many times they will either not wear their wedding ring or they will hide the wedding ring hand really look back at your photos your pictures and I am certain you will see that what I'm telling you is not only the truth but it will be eye-opening to you another way that the narcissist plays the texting games with the pictures on the smartphone that is is this is they will sit let's say the pictures are being taken from the event they will not be anywhere near you they'll be on the opposite end of the photo and why that is that's showing you in that picture if you look back in time a clear wedge that was uh, dividing the two of you it was already driven there and they were letting you know with a picture that they took on their smartphone and they texted to whomever they wanted to that you two were together but you were not together this is why I'm sharing social media with the narcissist usually in the beginning of these relationships but not always you are smothered or littered all over their social media they can't wait to post pictures of you and them because you are so happily in love you are or you were they're not they're just looking at you as the uh, person who fell for the mask but then as that relationship goes on and on and on your picture begins to fade away it begins to disappear from their social media and then that's when the narcissist appears single although they're not perhaps they're still married to you or they were still married to you but there's a shift and again this is the conundrum if you say something to the narcissist because they took their pictures with the smartphone and they plastered them all over social media and they don't include you or involve you as a matter of fact maybe you're being triangulated again and there are pictures of them with co-workers that are the same sex as you if you call them out and say hey what's going on I mean well I used to be all over your, your your social media then they would say something like this you're so insecure what's your problem that's my social media I can do whatever I want to I can post whatever I want to go get help you need therapy I mean you're so insecure they will say things like that and yes I know I said insecure twice because I used to hear that frequently point being is all these things add up to the texting games of the narcissist you see the the narcissist uses the smartphone to not only get supply to record people to re record people's audios and videos to take pictures that are meant to inflict damage to take pictures using multiple filters to make it seem like they're living the best life on the planet when in fact they're not and this is all by design it's all on purpose it's meant to keep you wondering it's meant to keep you stuck it's meant to keep you thinking about the narcissist so they can live in your mind rent free that's what the narcissist wants many times they don't want you healing they don't want you learning they don't want you growing they don't want you involving they want to keep you stuck so now let's fast forward a little bit let's say the relationship has ended but you do not have the wisdom you don't know what's going on yet and let's say they did discard you well what are you doing I can assure you what you did do is you were texting them or trying to call them and did they receive or accept your texts or calls probably not but maybe but the point being there is this is when you are looking for closure or answers or solutions or you're looking for a, the narcissist again you didn't know they were a narcissist back then to sit down and grab that cup of coffee and discuss what's going on well they can't give you closure they don't want to give you closure they want to keep you in as much pain and misery and discomfort as possible so when you would text them maybe they would give you a one-word answer maybe they would say a classic line and if this resonates with you drop comments below they would say something like this I just need time and space I just need time and space when you hear something like that 
and you're dealing with a narcissist, that means the new supply is lined up, but you don't know what you're dealing with. So you believe what they're telling you, which means they, they need time and space to think about the relationship. That's not the case. They're trying to drag this out as long as possible to keep you stuck, to keep you pining for them, to keep you wondering who they're with, what they're doing, to keep you trapped in that devaluation stage. This is by design again. So the texting games of the narcissist go on and on. So the discard, this is when you were really at a vulnerable place. You were in a vulnerable position from the minute you met them, but after you were discarded, you were extremely vulnerable. And again, you were text the narcissist. And then perhaps one day you got the wisdom and you figured out, oh my gosh, this person I was with was a narcissist. I need to block them. I need to go no contact. I need to delete them and remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them. That's what you do. That's what you must do. Because you see, the games will continue as long as the narcissist is available to enter your life. The games will continue as long as the doors are open for them to communicate with you. And texting is their favorite way to do it. It sincerely is. When you're stuck and you're thinking and sitting around wondering if the narcissist is gonna text you when you don't know that they're a narcissist, that is not a good place to be. You are extremely vulnerable and you are extremely, extremely in a shallow and dark, deep place that you don't even know that you were in. And the narcissist does in or did know that you were there. That's why they wanted to press the gas pedal of pain. That's why they wouldn't text you. And just about the time you began to heal, perhaps you accepted or received, I should say, a Hoover. What is that? Again, a Hoover is when the narcissist is trying to draw you back into the relationship. And many times they will try to do it via text. You'll get a phantom text saying something like this, maybe even from a strange phone number. How are you? Miss you. Love you. And you're like, what's that? Oh my God, it was the narcissist. This, these things happen all over the globe. As I'm creating this video and you're consuming it, it's happening right now somewhere. But the point is, is you must understand that communicating with the narcissist, it has never served you. It will never serve you. And the texting games of the narcissist will continue to go on and on and on. These games must go on because that's how the narcissist lives, but they must go on without you because you already got the message. You now have boundaries. You're not a people pleaser. You do not answer texts that do not come from people that you don't know who they are. Those lifelong learning lessons have now been applied and you are healing and you're learning and growing and teaching and becoming awakened and aware. So understand the texting games of the narcissist. This is exactly how they live. Their smartphone is basically their third arm and they dish out and or administer as much punishment and pain to anybody who does not have the wisdom or who has not broken the trauma bond. This is exactly what they do. Everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. And texting for you, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, texting is a form of communication. And it's not meant to be weaponized. It's meant to make you available to healthy or stable people. Flip it, that's not what the narcissist wants. They want to administer as much punishment from anywhere on the planet to anybody they're communicating with via text. That's what they do. That's why the cycle goes on and on and on. And that's how people get lured into these relationships because they don't know what they're up against and they think they see the picture or image of somebody on social media that perhaps they're attracted to. Next thing you know, that person's playing games with them. Next thing you know, they meet in real life and get taken to the cleaners with all their money, their time, everything, because that is a toxic narcissistic person or a scam artist, but they're both interchangeable. Everyone, I love you all. God bless you and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye you guys.